Hi, welcome to The Stitch TV Show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilting talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. In addition to our talk shows, we also host virtual stitch-ins and create tutorial videos and online classes. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. So today we're going to talk about tips for working with panels and rag quilts. Our show today is brought to you by our friends at QT Fabrics, and you can learn more about them in the link in the show notes. And I did grab that I've since hidden from myself. <laughs> oh, wait, it's way over here. Uh, oh, I untied the bow. Which means I get to keep it, right? I accidentally untied the bow. It's fine. So these, uh, this is the um, Speckles Fat Quarter Group that they have, which I think, you know, I've been working on these uh, <laughs> very oh. intensive um, New York Beauty Blocks. And I really think that these kind of fat, bun fat quarter bundles are perfect for blenders because you really need that just little bit to go on an arc or something to match things. And this, this is, uh, may not be going anywhere. <laughs> well, Lynn, let's be honest. No one's going anywhere right now. <laughs> this is true. I, and, and I did accidentally just untie the top. So yeah, it's now not new in box. Yeah. Well, we also have hanging behind me the mingle quilt. So we had this on the table a couple episodes ago, or I think it's called Let's Mingle. Um, and we'd had it as a kit. And this was the fabric that was digitally printed. So a yard was printed to be four fat quarters. And like, what a delight to be able to just like cut it, got my four fat quarters. There the, you go. Uh, the, Pattern that came with it is part of a kit for quilt shops to buy. So I think the kit is called Let's Mingle. The actual fabric line is called Mingle because they're mingling four fat quarters in one yard because of the digital printing. So um, got it, <laughs> got it put together and quilted. Uh, you can't see the edges. Spoiler alert, it's not bound. <laughs> I ran out of time. <laughs> there it is. You know, I know we've been staying at home and everything, but let me just say, I personally have been so so busy and granted it's of my own design but uh, wow I've got two more zoom calls today <laughs> with um well I'm doing a zoom call with my church which you know because we can't get together and it's Palm Sunday um but also my cousins have decided my family my cousins have decided that we should all meet together on Sundays so we're you know, doing this big family reunion fab every Sunday now. So we're hanging out for about 30, 40 minutes, talking to each other and making sure everybody's okay and checking up on everybody. And I think that's been kind of cool. So, so a couple of tips if you are using like video conferencing. Good so tip. Zoom in particular, what any any of these video conferencing sites, like use a password or some kind of security feature if you can. Because there's a lot of easy algorithms that hackers can use to like figure out your meeting ID and like show up and show really grody images to you. So use a password. I've heard that. And by the way, because I do use Zoom and I have an account with Zoom, they emailed me and said, we are putting a password on all your meetings. So yeah. they are proactively yeah, they like are. stepping up to that because I think they have had some problems. The other thing mute button is a beautiful thing because the way many of the video conferencing softwares work and we've seen that back in the days of google hangout and zoom and we use webex for my day job that who's ever making the loudest noise like gets highlighted and shown in the big window and yeah. so if you're sneezing or coughing or you know drinking coffee and clanging stuff like the mute button is a good thing if you're not talking <laughs> Well, it's really interesting because I think you can see the different generations deal with uh, the Zoom technology because they do stuff like, hey, I, I don't know how, how this works. Like, can you see? <laughs> I taught my mom how to Skype and I Skyped my parents yesterday. So that was fun. My dad was like in the background. You could just see this. Yeah. One. <laughs> so funny. And so one of my cousins, he was outside. And the reason we've switched to Zoom instead of another software is because they didn't have an all mute capability. 
And he's outside walking because it was a nice day. And he was like, I've got it on low. That's all we could hear. We're like, Gary, mute. He's like, I've got it on low volume. He's just walking. You hear the stuff blowing. I'm like, oh, no. It was interesting. So hopefully yeah. this week will go better. I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. So that is why we're in this whole remote setup for the talk show is, you know, Georgia, where we live, is officially under lockdown. I don't know what the right term is. Stay at home. Stay at home order from the governor. Yes. Uh, it was per county for a while. And then the governor said, no, 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 everybody. So yep. um, we have been to the grocery store and through drive-ins and curbside pickup. That has been our, um, you know. Yeah. We've gone to the park to walk Fred and have kept, you know, distant from other people that we pass. So that's really the, the big excitement for the day is like, where are we going to walk the dog? <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard people are walking. I mean, you do it anyway. Yeah. But I've heard that that's one of the things a lot of people are doing is walking dogs that they haven't normally. Okay. I got to tell you what I did. <laughs> So Mike and I have decided we'd watch a movie, you know, on the weekends and stuff. So I was like, well, I really, I saw where Onward, which was the new Pixar film, um, got released where you could rent it. Because I didn't want to buy it, but I wanted to rent it. So I looked it up and found it and we rented it on Prime. The next night, it was on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> I'm like... Dang it, Mike's gonna kill me. <laughs> but no, it was fine. He's I'm still alive. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. So let's dive into our show topics. Oh, that'd be good. There you go. So um working with panels. I feel like we've talked about panel quilts before, but I wanted to revisit it. Okay. Yeah, I think we have, but it's been a really long time, so I don't know what we said. <laughs> and yeah, there's that. <laughs> And and the reason this popped up, because as I was cutting fabric for the Mingle quilts, the way that the fabric is printed really reminded me of panels and how they're printed. Because you're getting a yard of fabric and you're trying to cut specifically on lines to get fat quarters out of it. And frequently when you get a panel, there's some that come as just like, here's the big panel that's the full width of fabric and, you know, either 24 or sometimes 36 inches. Um some of them come though with like much smaller pieces that you kind of chop off. Right. And as a quilter, your inclination is like, let's cut on the grain, cut on the grain. <laughs> Doesn't always work when you're working with cutting specific graphic elements, like you see on panels, or even honestly, if you were fussy cutting. And so it just it, taking a minute to revisit when you're working with panels, some of those tips that you can use to, make sure that you're more successful in getting it to look the way you want. And it's really le letting go of the desire to cut on the grain. Well, I, I kind of have two opinions about it. Like you're either going to let the print rule or you're going to let the straight line rule because some of those that are like boxes or you look at the straight lines because of how they're printed, it's not always to your ruler straight. It may <laughs> visually look straight but it may not be to the ruler straight. And so when you think about that, I think you just have to make a choice like, okay, is it okay with me because I want it visually and logistically straight that I lose this part of the edge of the black line or the black border around it? Is it okay? Is that going to be okay with me? In creating, and I think that's just you're just gonna have to go, or do I scissor yeah. cut it? Yeah, and it's not gonna be straight at like against a ruler, but it's visually gonna look right to me. So, if you do scissor cut or just get over the fact that maybe it's like an 87 degree angle instead of a 90 degree right angle. Once you get it cut, you can block it, which is something that people do, you know, for finished quilts, particularly for shows or even like a knitting project. So, you know, spray it with, I would honestly go with a little bit of like spray starch. Oh, the heavy duty stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I don't know if it'd go that bananas because sometimes in just regular blocking, you're just spraying it with water and letting it dry that way. True. So it's making sure that you've got a grid that you can line it up to. And it may be a design wall or it may be just, you know, a styrofoam board or something that you've got that I wouldn't let it touch styrofoam directly. Just put a piece of muslin or just another piece of cotton fabric over it. And, you know, you, you're now pinning like the corners and all along the edge and just kind of doing it nice and like 90 degrees squared up. Okay. Now, honestly. No, but I don't do that. But you oh. could. Not doing that. This you totally could. People that have a lot of free time on their hands now. Okay, here's my here's my thought process in that. Okay, I bought a panel because I need to. My thought process is: I buy a panel because a I'm attracted to the design, or b I need to make a quick quilt for someone. If I was spending all that time trying to block this thing, that's that's not quick anymore. No. So I just, I don't know. I'm not a. It, it depends on. It's a choice. It's a choice. Number. It's on your quilt number. Absolutely. Like if you want a 90 quilt number of 90 for your quilt, like pretty close to 100% perfection, you're yeah. going to take the time to do that. But if you're doing something quick in a hurry because somebody's having a baby and you got seven other projects going and you're Absolutely. like, quilt number 70, like that's fine. Also, babies don't care. <laughs> also, hey, Good. people make them now because January, I'm just saying. The timing is going to point to a little bit of a baby boom. In I think so. I think so. Um, I, the other thing I was going to say is look at the panel itself because a lot of time they will give you like that quarter inch extra area. Um, and that's what you're looking at because just remember that print is going to be quarter inch on each edge is going to be caught up in a seam allowance. So when you're making choices on how to cut it, that may be a consideration. Yes. Like you don't want any white to show or cream or whatever it's printed on. Yeah. I've got a good example over there, but um I, like I bought these panels of the, the United States with the national parks like around it, but it's printed on a cream background. The entire panel itself though is, and it's from Riley Blake, actually the title panel itself. I think the title panel itself is like darks and Browns and whatever. So that cream is going to look weird. Yeah. So it's got to be cut off for this panel to work. Um, so it's, you just have to look and pay attention to that quarter inch. And let's be honest. I may, I've done, I've, I've done a few panel quilts lately because, um, these national park, uh, panel quilts that I did. And you just have to know, recognize that, oh, I'm going to cut off a quarter of an inch and then that's going to take it in. So if you're doing other blocks around it, you need to take that into consideration. Because yeah. a lot of times I'll use a panel, but I'm still doing some piecing. Right. Um, yeah, you need coping strips or stashing or something because yeah. like after you do the trimming and the straightening, it may end up at like 17 and a half by 34. And you're like, well, what size block? <laughs> like I can't use a nine inch block, can't use a six inch. So you've got to add you know, fashing and then kind of get that to the size that matches other blocks that you can easily put in repeat. And that's, that is one of the keys to the whole, you know, working with panels, especially if you want to do a pieced blocks or something with it is you've got to bring it to a size that you can then add the blocks to. And, you know, if that's a 12 inch block or if that's a nine inch block yeah. or, Something that's divisible by two or divisible by three, and you can work it. That's it. That's it. That's exactly what you want to do, and don't feel like borders don't always have to be even. So, like if your panel is taller than wider, you can make your coping strips on the sides skinnier, but wider on the top and bottom, so that it does give you a true square that's easier to put blocks around. So I think that's something, you know, just to consider when you're working with those. Yeah. So let's talk a minute about quilting. 
because part of the allure of panels is like this big printed design that you don't have to piece or applique or any of that. And then you go to quilt and occasionally I take pause because I'm like, well, I don't want to just quilt all over the faces of these dogs. <laughs> I <laughs> Every once in a while. And then sometimes I'm just like, eh, babies don't care. <laughs> One, babies don't care. Two, I think it's like any other, you know, you're going to quilt. I have done panels that are specific to the image. So like I quilted a panel for a quilt shop. I was learning and she's like, do you want to practice in here? And I, because they sell more panels if they have a sample. Yeah. So I, they gave me a panel and it was Noah's Ark. So it had the, you know, the giraffes and the lions and all the different animals coming out of the Ark. And I have to admit for each animal, I did different kind of fur or, you know, on the draft, I did kind of circles or I did, you know, different images that would relate to those images. Took me for freaking ever. It looked great. Um, that being said, babies don't care. I was practicing. And I think it's one way you can practice your quilting. Um, using a panel for inspiration. I will tell you that these national park, I've seen Angela Walters do these national park ones and do really intricate quilting on these panels that enhance the image of the panel and um i i did a panel of them and just like all over meandered it but i gave it away and I, it's something i didn't want to take time to do but i think that they can look really interesting i mean look at some of the stuff that um kylie port porter is doing with um her honest fabric yeah and how she has just these, and even the image of those flowers that people are taking and doing really intricate quilting on, that's essentially a panel. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's a whole cloth quilt. So I think you can go as, you know, quilt, quilted to death level or all over meander level and everything in between is just going to give you a really good you know, wherever you are and wherever that is, who it's going. It, we always come back to this. What's it being used for? Who's it going to? Yeah. I think we've it's said that. Something that the dog's going to, you know, drool on. Have we not said that in like every show ever? I mean, I just yeah, think, it's like, <laughs> you know. So the first quilt officially that I ever did, I bought a panel from Hobby Lobby and it was like kittens playing with yarn, I think. And sandwiched it with some polyester batting because that's what I did back then. Not good at basting quilts, didn't really know what I was doing. Puckers all on the back, just folds and tugs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Probably because I didn't free motion quilt it. I used a walking foot to outline all the pictures in the panel, like painful. Okay. I would never suggest somebody do that. <laughs> no, having done it, I can also suggest you never do that. You don't want to do that. that I didn't know. I, didn't know. I was, you know, right. freshly engaged. My mother in law, my future mother in law was a quilter. And I thought, well, let me get us something to talk about because I'm not giving her grandkids for a bit. <laughs> and so I was like, I'll just try this quilting thing. I should have looked on the internet for help. <laughs> but I got it done and uh, donated it, sold it at an auction for the cat shelter I volunteer at. So, like, it went for good. I'm sure some cat loves it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Purpose serves. You know, there are some quilts that just need, that's what they need to be. Yeah. It's funny, I got up yesterday morning, my husband was already downstairs on the couch, and <laughs> He was under a quilt. Josie was under a quilt. And I walked downstairs and looked at him and went, there are mornings that you're happy I'm a quilter. He goes, yes, there are. I mean, and the dog's laying on it, but it's it's used for what it needs to be used for. You know, yeah. I'm happy that they were both snuggled up under things I made for them. So, yeah. I did want to say this about panels. Um, 
And just to say, you know, we're talking about it in the quilt world, but panels also print lots of other stuff. Like they do the soft books, which are really cute gifts for um, in January. <laughs> if you don't want to make a quilt, there's all kinds of soft books. Um, I have a sample of one that's, you know, like they are, this is like uh, Mother Goose kind of stuff. But they will give you directions on the panel itself how to sew them together so that it you read the book essentially um not to say that you have to make it into a book you totally don't have to make it into a book but that's what the panel is designed for i've also seen panels that do little soft dolls um i did one for my niece that was red riding hood and it was a little doll and it had a um it had a little cape with it and i think the she had a toy with it it was a little wolf kind of thing on the play of Red Riding Hood. Um, I've also seen stuff where you can do panels that are aprons and they'll be like holiday aprons or like Thanksgiving. You know, I've, I've seen ones that say give thanks or something really fun. And those are quick and easy gifts too. So don't just, you know, think, oh, panels are just for um, quilts, there's a lot of panels out there that are a variety of other quick, easy gifts. I'm totally distracted by one of the cats outside yelling. Oh. And now I hear running around and I'm like, where are you? Who's chasing who? What's happening? So, oh, the joys of all being trapped together in the same house. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I uh, I yeah. read a lot of memes online and I'm like um yeah yeah we have a pretty quiet house <laughs> yeah we have flurries of activity so I think we've covered everything we wanted to on panels um oh one other thing one other yeah. thing I wanted to say a lot of times some panels have a variety of images so they'll have a big image and then they'll have smaller ones around it you can cut that up yeah totally so you can take the smaller images and make a block just out of that image or just don't let the way somebody presents it to you be the only way you look at it yeah and pan panels also make great one block wonders that is true. You did one. And I think it was, you just have to buy what, six? Well, six to make the front and then a seventh for the back if you want to like see what the original image was. And I have another set of seven panels that I need to work on for an upcoming show topic. Maybe I, on One Block Wonders. I have a One Block Wonder panel that I did and it was of this tree with the rainbow. So it turned out really good. I've not quilted it yet, but I can show it to y'all. Well, oh, not that, that episode. Not right now. It was a right now, we're going to make an awkward segue. Okay. In lieu of, you know, a mid-show break into, like, rag quilts. Look at my notes. They're on the back of Outlander calendar. There's Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> my sister gave me an Outlander calendar. I was like, why well, don't I have to look all professional now? I can use my... <laughs> That is correct. So, right, quilts, rolling on into our next topic. Oh, did we do the awkward segue? Yeah, I just did it. You missed oh. it. It was, it was maybe not as awkward as it could have been, but I'll make a note for the next show to make it more awkward. <laughs> I was so excited about my Outlander calendar. Um, <laughs> all right, rag quilts. You put this topic on the spreadsheet. What do you want to say about them? Oh, Fred, did I really? Yeah, you did. Surprise. So I will say rag quilts. I haven't done a traditional rag quilt, but I have done a denim rag quilt, Ooh. which actually came about from a quilting friend slash viewer. I think she's a viewer. She'll definitely listen to the podcast. That's how we met. Um, she had a giveaway on her blog to win like cuts of denim to make this denim quilt. And I entered and like happened to win. And I was like, oh, crap, now I got to make it but it was different size cuts of denim. Um, you and I have a different approach to that. Oh, I won this stuff. I have to make it. Yeah, no. 
well, what else was I going to do with like tons of squares of denim? Um, so I backed it with red flannel and did. So you had the heaviest quilt ever. Oh yeah. But so this was at the time when we were still going to outdoor sports games for my son. And so oh, that was this would be, we're going outside and using this quilt when yeah. it's like 50 degrees out <laughs> and we're watching baseball or football or whatever he was playing at the time. Yeah. That's perfect for that kind of stuff. Well, actually, so what is a rag quilt? Let's go there first, maybe. Okay, so a rag quilt is when you take a a square of fabric and you put the batting in it, and it's going to be cut, I think, an inch smaller than the square. So if you do a ten inch square, you're going to cut your batting at nine inches or something like that. There's no hard and fast rules on this, um, honestly. And then what you do is you sew an X on the batting. You know, you're sandwiching, it. you're sandwiching it. So you got top fabric, batting, but backing fabric, all 10 inch square, batting's nine inches. Then you sew an X on the whole piece, right? Do that for however many you want to make for the size of quilt. I've done a king size, I've done a baby size. This is funny that you say this because this is one of my first quilts because I was like, the quilting on it is done in 10 inches, not in 108 inches. Then what you do is you take the squares and you sew them together with a half inch seam allowance. And so what you're doing is you are sewing the batting to where the batting meets up. And you can make those seam allowances bigger if you want to, but you're sewing it to where the batting meets up and you sew all the blocks together to where the batting bunts together. Kind of, do you see what I mean? You'll so I, when I've done it, it was so, so the backsides are a, of what you want to be the back of the quilt are together because the right. raw edges are going to be part of the top. Of the right, quilt. right, right. So you've got all of these weird things sewn together with edges sticking up in the middle. Then yep. take scissors. And this is my big tip. You want scissors that have a spring in them so that they bounce back really easy. There's a reason for that because now you're going to clip all of those edges about, I don't know, a half inch apart, three quarters inch apart, an inch apart. There's no hard and fast rule on this. And you're going to clip it to, I would say, you know, four or five threads from the seam allowance. Don't clip to the seam allowance, but clip almost there, right? Right. Don't. But your actual stitching. Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. <laughs> so, then the reason you want this is because you're going to be doing this a lot. A lot. And it helps to have that spring back so you're not moving your hand that it hurts your um, thumb if you do it too much. I know this because I've done it. Um, and so... Once you've done that, then you wash the quilt and it rags those edges. It frays them essentially. And it gives you a 3D kind of look. And it's just, it's a great giveaway quilt. It's a great use up scrap quilt. It's a great beginner quilt. Um, so when you're stitching the squares together to make rows, are you going edge to edge or are you going from like half inch from the edge to half inch from the edge. Oh, good point. I do kind of the half inch, half inch. Yeah. So and make sure you secure your seams, like backstitch. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> yep. Or else it's going to fall apart when you wash it. Right, right, right. Now, what I have done too, like once you get the whole thing together, is take the victory lap and stitch mm -hmm. around the outer edge, you know, half inch from the right. outer edge as well, because you want to be able to fray the, do you fray the edges too, or do you leave those? Yeah. Okay. I frayed them. Now here's my other tip on that too. We live in a house that's on septic. I didn't want all of that lint going into a septic tank. Um, so 
if you have that situation or if you're concerned about the lint, then I would go to a laundromat and wash it. See, what I did was put it in the dryer first to kind of fluff and gather all that lint because the lint trap in the dryer captures that. And then I washed it. Good point. And that cut down some of it too. Just if you don't have a laundromat nearby or the laundromat near you, maybe a little skeevy. Um, I think that's the case for us. <laughs> so I did, I think I did like 15 minutes, didn't really need heat on it, just no. like breaking those fibers up. So anything that was loose was going to come out in the dryer. And think about when you do this, like if you've got fabric that frays really easily, that's perfect for this. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this. Cheaper fabric or less expensive fabric frays better. Yes. Because the weave is not as tight. It's so, you know, if you've got some fabric that maybe you bought when you were first quilting and before you knew that there was a difference in fabrics and you're like, I really don't want to use it, but I don't want it to sit here. I think this project may be a great project to use up that kind of fabric because it works better in this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In that same vein, don't try to use bed sheets because oh. those have such a tight weave, 300 thread count theoretically compared to like a 180 in it traditional. It doesn't fray. Um, likewise, batiks typically have a little bit of a higher thread count. They won't work great for this either. Yeah. But it and that feels very drapey, has a loose hand that if you hold up to the light that you can see through it a little bit. That's the kind of fabric that works better for a rat quilt. And another good fabric that looks works really well for a rag quilt is flannel, especially if you're going to give it to a, you know, a, a small person. It's warm and fuzzy and for them to, you know, feel, I mean, they're very texture oriented. So that's, you know, something else you might want to consider if you, I steer clear of flannel because we live in Atlanta and I'm like, we don't need it. Down here, we do not need flannel. You know, by the time you got a quilt on, you really don't need. Although, I'm telling you, those minky back quilts I have in my house, they are not just for young people, they are for the family and apparently Salukis. They are the ones that stay out on the couch all the time. In my oh, house. I have two on couches upstairs in the living room. And in fact, that's what Mike was snuggled under when I walked downstairs because the morning's still a little cool here. I mean, it's still in the fifties, so still got a little chill. Yeah. So, but yeah, um, I think they're great quilts and I think um, people look at them as not quilts, but they, they technically are. Um, so batting. Are you typically sticking with your normal, like 100% cotton or an 80-20? Or are you going with like something that's lighter, like a poly? Um, Doesn't matter. Honestly, this is where I use up my batting scraps. Yeah. Because you're cutting it down to these smaller bite sizes. So, you know, when you're, when you've done a big quilt and you've got this much batting left, but it's not enough to do a quilt unless you frank about it. Um, or you don't want to, you know, you've done so many postcards, we're done with postcards or, you know, it's just that weird size. So I think it's a great, great way to use up scrap batting as well. Yeah. Now, when I did the denim and flannel one, there was no batting. There was no need for batting in there. Oh God, no. <laughs> I was going to ask you that. I was like, polyester because I did not need like another layer of cotton in there, but there was no batting in that one. It's just like. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. So. But that is a good way to use up old jeans, too, if you just want to do that. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you've got old jeans because the kids have grown out of them or because your husband puts his keys in the pocket and they've ripped that hole. Okay. That's how Mark gets his. He gets them right because he puts his keys in his pocket and it's where the keys stick out right there on his thigh. That's where he gets the holes. Can you not get him to just use a carabiner and clip it on the belt loop instead of putting it in his pocket? You know what? There are some things I just, you we know. We don't those battles anymore. No. I, you know that like. 
I've been mm-hmm. married 20, almost 25 years. I'm good. Like he, yeah. <laughs> dance. It's not mine. <laughs> he can deal with it. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't fight that battle. Okay. <laughs> like, I want to say there was some other meaningful in- input that I had for this topic and it is like left my brain and it's not on my mind. The right scissors, I'm, those will make a big difference, I'm telling you. Um, yes. so that's expensive fabric work well. Flannel works great. Um, the other way you, that you could do it, and I've seen people do this, but you don't need batting, is if you've got that fleece, you can make a rag Ooh. quilt with the fleece with no batting and one layer. You can do two layers, but one layer, it's not going to fray like the rag quilt does, but it'll have fringe. Yeah. And I've done that as several quick gifts for, um, you know, someone had, I, a friend adopted two children and they were older. And so I found, I went and got some fleece that were bright kind of preteen colors. And um, I just took the squares and kind of arranged them. And that way it could be kind of fun. And the fleece now just has, so many tons of prints with it. It's a way to kind of take the fleece. Like I see a lot of people just take the fleece and fringe it and give it away. And this, I don't know, it, it gives you that other level of. A little more. Well, because if you did want to alternate colors, you could, you know, do a checkerboard pattern or something and just a little more interest then. I totally more. did that. So I was like a purple and pink kind of checkerboard pattern and one, and then I rotated like three different, two, there were two different pinks and one of them had a, oh, some character on it or something, you know? And so just instead of worrying about putting batting in it, just sew them together with that seam allowance and then cut the strips or the edges. And that's really quick, yeah. super quick and f- warm and fuzzy too. In fact, I made a really thick one and it's up in one of the bedrooms. And my mother-in-law is so, I love you, Debbie. My mother-in-law, she watches. My mother-in-law is very cold natured and my husband keeps the house really cold. So when they visit that's upstairs and I know that she gets it out on a regular basis when they stay. So. Yeah. I wouldn't use Mickey. Oh no. You will have a never ending source of lint. So do not use Mickey. Or a rag quilt, anything with a pile to it. So like velvet, velveteen, minky, like do not use it because of the unfinished edges that are exposed. Right. No, no, do not, do not. Other better uses for those fabrics. This is not it. I did use minky on the quilt upstairs, but this is how I did it. I bordered it on the back and just ragged the front of it. And then sewed it together through the the X's. So it was much more complicated how I did it. But I bordered it and tucked the, the raw edge of the minky inside. So that you wouldn't get those frayed edges. I did know what I, I knew what I was doing though. Because of, I knew how minky would react in that situation. But for it just to mean a raw edge, no. No. There is no way I would do that too too much Mickey, we've already got enough respiratory issues in the world right now do not add to it that's true, that's true. That. i was like i would show you my cutting table but it's quite embarrassing yeah mine des- is in desperate need of cleaning off at this point oh. just, yeah just, i can't even look i just don't <laughs> look. it's bad it's bad over there <laughs> Well, I think that's it for the show. So hopefully you all are taking care and staying safe and healthy. And let us know what sewing projects you're working on if you get a chance to. I know our healthcare workers are Mm. hopefully taking care of themselves, probably don't have the free time that many others do that might be stuck at home. So leave a comment on our blog or on the YouTube episode or in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches. And that's all we have for this episode. This show is made possible by QT Fabrics. Uh, we'd like to thank Big Think Productions for helping produce the stitch. Yeah, but they didn't do anything. Um, 
<laughs> Who said that last time? Like, I'm gonna take that out, <laughs> dude. He had done a thing. No, <laughs> actually, I think he's going out to get me breakfast through some drive-through. Um, <laughs> uh, if you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to turn on notifications on YouTube. More info about our show, as well as links to purchase fan gear, online classes, and quilt patterns can be found on our website, stitchtvshow.com. Tune in next time for more Quilting Chat with Friends.